What's up guys? Thanks so much for joining another episode of Cars, Bikes, and Coffee. I am Kurt, and yes, we are standing in the engine bay of the 1973 240Z. We need to do some prep work. We need to get rid of some rust. We need to clean this thing up. Stay tuned. Now the first order of business, you'll see that something is missing. Yes, we pulled the battery tray out. We are going to relocate the battery in the back of the car, but it left us some nasty rust so we need to take care of that we're gonna sand this back to metal um, yes there's a hole cut that hole there's actually uh, you could put a pick right through that and yes there's another hole over there because I was learning how to use a spot weld cutter for the first time so that was my first drill and I went right through lesson learned so we're gonna get going on this, clean this up, and prime it up. All right, so now that we've got everything grinded down as best as we can, we're gonna go ahead and start fixing these holes and even down with these little cut throughs that I did in my beginner's air. So we'll get that going. So now taking a look at this weld, and I am by no means even a beginner welder, that weld does not look good. So we're going to cut that out, put a little bit bigger of a patch, uh, as this seems a little bit weak, so we'll get into that. Alright, so now we've cut our hole out that we want to patch, so we'll go and cut the patch. We've got our patch cut, now what we need to do is give it a little shape to match the contour of the inner fender and just need a little bit of a bend. I'm just going to use a copper pipe to help with that. Alright, so we've got our patch in place and now what we want to do is just stitch weld this uh, very slowly in opposing fashion to let it cool. All right, so we've fixed our big rusty hole and we've also welded up the little mistakes we made with the spot cutter drill. And the big thing here is I used a flux core welder and I really should have used a MIG with gas and that would have made my life a whole lot easier. But it's done, we're ready. We're gonna put on some navel jelly, which is basically phosphoric acid. And that's gonna just eat up some of this uh, rust that I wasn't able to grind out, and especially down below here. And we'll do that. All we need to do is apply this, uh, leave it on for five to 10 minutes, and then wash it off. And of course, we wanna be wearing gloves with this. All right, it's been about 10 minutes, so now we're gonna clean this up just with a spray bottle of water and some paper towels. And now that we've gotten that phosphoric acid off, what I'm gonna do is just give this a good blow with some compressed air and then let it dry. So now that we have the metal dry and it's ready for some filler, because we're going to put that over the pitted metal and as well the uh, weld that we did. Now we've got the body filler on, we're going to let it dry. All right, it's been about a half hour, so now we're going to block sand this with about 80 grit sandpaper. So we're putting a final coat of some plastic filler on the uh, dents and just smoothing that all out real nice. And we're cleaning up some 
terrible use of body filler from the factory. So we're going to clean this all up, make it all nice and smooth, uh, fill in some lines with some more body filler, and just begin sanding and get scuffing up the uh, factory paint. gone and scuffed up all the paint there are a few spots where we're going to need to put a little primer down where we broke through to metal like on that seam and down here where there's some rubbing from the odometer cable and right there so we're going to go through that and also there's some tight spots where we need to use some hand sanding so we'll jump on that clean this up all right so we've got everything sanded and looking pretty good. Put some primer on some bare spots. And now what we need to do is we're gonna apply some seam sealer along this edge and up here and as well the same on the other side. And get that. <laughs> So now that we have the seams taped up, we're going to go ahead and put seam sealer in and get those all sealed up. Alright, so we've got our seam sealer in. we got to let this dry for 30 minutes before we can do any kind of painting. And we're going to scuff it up though, so we have to wait 24 hours. All right, so the engine bay is all prepped. Everything is taped off and sealed and ready to go. So we need to build a paint booth, basically, around the engine bay just to keep all the paint and all the fumes off of our stuff in the garage and keep it all clean. So we're going to build that out of PVC pipe that we had laying around the house. Here is our cheap PVC paint booth ready for the engine bay. Just to show, we are running a little box fan. Inside, we've got a filter professionally duct taped. Now we've got drop cloths. Everything's covered and ready to go. So, we're going to put a coat of paint. All right, so we're going with the Spray Max product. This is filled at my local automotive paint store, and this is going to be the Toyota Magnetic Gray. That's what my car is already painted with. And then we're gonna follow it up with a 2K clear. All right, first coat done. Already looking 100 times better. All right, now we're on to coat number two. One more coat. And there's our third coat. Now we're going to wait 30 minutes and do our 2K clear. Alright, we've got first coat of clear on. Looking shiny. And we have clear coat applied, it looks nice. I think it's time to get ready to put an engine in. And a transmission. All right, so it's all done. So we need to just clean up. We're gonna get the front end back in because that's all painted and cleaned and get this car ready so we can put in the transmission and that engine we've been building. So. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button too. Oh, did I see?